Welcome, everyone. Today we're going to talk, Thane, Joyal, and I, uh, Todd Wallace, about the significance of board holism. So, hello, Thane. Hi, everyone. Hi, Todd. Hi there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to start with a little clip from our friend and colleague, Michael Healy. Michael is going to talk a little bit. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, a little bit of a discussion that uh, our CBUILD team had dealing with this concept of, of board holism. So here is Michael Healy. I continue to be really uncomfortable with the, the premise that it's a good idea for a, for a group of people to make a decision that says no one in the group should be allowed to express dissent publicly. And, and it seems like for me, I'd, I'd feel much stronger not trying to make up a, a kind of a legal rationale for how to deal with it after the fact if the group made such a decision, but I'd want to try to figure out how to help a group before that decision not make that decision to say, you know, that, that's part of, part of how our society functions in a democracy, that the free exchange of ideas is important, and so why would it ever be a good idea for a, for a board to say, no, you can't tell anyone that you disagreed with the decision of the group. I just, I can't, I can't imagine why that would be a good idea. And so that we might better serve our co-ops and our boards by counseling them not to get themselves in that position to start with, but to find ways to make sure that the, the decision of the group is clear and the authority of the group is clear, but that opinions of the individuals are just that, opinions of individuals, and we should find productive ways of allowing people to have the conversation. Thane, what did you think of that quote from Michael? I think Michael raises the core concern that people have when they think about becoming part of a board. How do we as board members fulfill our fiduciary responsibility? How do we conduct the job of the being a board member, uh, and at the same time, keep our own integrity. I agree. Before we delve into this, I'd like to go over uh, the desired outcome that we have for our shared uh, conversation slash presentation today. Basically, we're here to help you all understand the concept of board holism, be able for you to work with that concept, with the idea that you're going to build trust and respect within the board using a sound group process. All right, we're going to start out with the question of what. What is board holism? Uh, I'm going to say that the concept of board holism is fairly easy to express and articulate, not so easy to implement or practice sometimes. Let's start with this articulation. Number one, authority lies with the group as a whole, with the board as a whole. If you look at your source documentation, you'll see that it is a job, uh, a fiduciary job that is granted to the whole group, not to individuals. Secondly, the board speaks with one voice. This is the most common definition that I get when I ask people what what they think board holism means, that it speaks with one voice. I want to say that, yes, the board speaks with one voice, but it doesn't mean that we're robots. Um, would you agree with that thing? Absolutely. Participating in group process yeah. is dynamic. So does it mean that we're robots or machines, but that we run through a successful group process in order to then come to a unified, clear voice? Let me just add very briefly that board holism is not a concept that has value in and of itself, but it is valuable in relation to giving us these things, allowing us to have a successful group process and clear and intentional communication outlook. So this is a sample of a state business law, and it could be any state. I think it's always helpful for people on cooperative boards to think about the cooperative as the legal entity that it is. It was created uh, under the authority of 
the law of some state, usually the state where it's located. And the board is a creation of the law that allows the cooperative to be established. It's real common to see a statement like this in the law uh, that authorizes formation of your co-op. It says a cooperative is governed by its board. When we talk about board holism, the reason we use the phrase is to remind people that a board is composed of multiple individuals and yet it has only one voice. So by definition, the only authority that individual board members have come in that collective body. The group of people together must speak with one voice. Thank you, Thane. I want to share a clip right now from uh, another speaker. This is Dave Swanson, who is a partner with Dorsey and Whitney LLP. Let's hear what uh, Dave has to say around the question of why, why board holism is important. Why would you say that a board has a duty to act with one voice? And why, why would you say that some, someone who's on a board who doesn't agree with a board action really shouldn't go out um, pushing their dissenting viewpoint? Well, I think the reason for that is that when you're on, the, you know, it, it, the, the article talks about this, and I think there's very clearly a difference between being elected to a legislative body and elected to a board of an economic entity. And when you're elected to the legislature, you're not, you don't have a fiduciary duty. So you got complete immunity. Um, you're representing a constituent. Sometimes the best thing that you can do in a legislative policy session like that or a situation like that is create chaos mm. because chaos slows things down and creates opportunity for you know the other side not to win and all that stuff. But when you're on a board, your duty is to do the best you can for the owners and members of your cooperative. And creating chaos usually doesn't accomplish that. So that's why you have, you know, boards and this general concept that boards should act with one voice and speak with one voice and even if they're not unanimous, under, you know, have a have an understanding about how um, an action, especially one that's going to get a lot of attention, gets communicated. What do you think about that quote, Thane? I think Dave makes a really important point that co-op boards are not legislatures. I think it's important that we don't necessarily follow what our elected officials do, <laughs> as an example, when we're trying to govern our co-ops. So how do boards carry out their fiduciary responsibility and still make good decisions? Dave's point is really well taken. A co-op board isn't a legislature. We shouldn't be following the example of our uh, elected officials in Congress, for example, uh, when we're sitting down at the co-op board meeting. Uh, instead, we should always keep in mind the shared responsibility we have to the co-op as a whole. Do you have anything to add to this concept of the role of the, role of the board as a whole? I think good process is really important to helping the board do its job. So when it leads the co-op, if it delegates authority for uh, carrying out the day-to-day -day operations of the co-op to a single point, um, if it's careful to be sure in its deliberations to represent all of the owners of the co-op, if it keeps uh, sets and keeps agreements about its own process and conduct in the boardroom, and if it's responsive to the world around it as well as its owners, and if people are responsive to each other, um, the board as a whole can lead successfully. It's, it's so important to remember that the board's role is to govern on behalf of all the owners. And that's the purpose, that's the beauty of the one voice, is that it's a single voice uh, that uh, reflects the interests of many. Great. Uh, what would you say about the role of individual directors themselves? <laughs> Don't be like the green guy. So <laughs> when you walk into a boardroom, 
you bring your whole being, your whole self, and you bring everything with you uh, that uh, has made you cranky during the day or made you delighted. And you bring all of your relationships to the individual board members to the table. And you also bring your relationship to the co-op, which may have delighted you in the last month or may have disappointed you. When you sit down at the board table, it really helps, first of all, to have done your homework. It's not possible to participate in the meeting if you aren't ready to participate in the discussions that are planned for the meeting. It's important to focus on the agenda. If you have a good agenda setting process and it's got all the important steps that need to be acted upon at the meeting, uh, then no matter how interesting a topic or a digression that comes up might be, uh, if we as individual board members can uh, be disciplined and not chase those interesting fragments until after the meeting, um, we have a better chance of doing our job, keeping our meetings on track. When things come up, when there's disagreement in the boardroom, that's the best time of the board meeting. I think one of the most exciting things I heard uh, Brett Fairbairn say once that the best part of why we like to have meetings is because what happens is unexpected. But because what happens is unexpected, because we're human, uh, sometimes we'll have emotional reactions to what happens during a meeting. And it's so important to remember to be constructive, to use a um, positive inquiring uh, state of mind uh, to further discussions, and always remember why you're having the conversation so that it is possible to bring it to closure and so it is possible to discriminate whether this, this uh, concern belongs in this conversation or belongs on the bike rack for future attention. I'm going to talk just briefly about the role of the board chair in creating this successful process. I, I really, uh, the main job of the board chair is to protect process integrity to ensure that the integrity, the process itself is managed in a very successful way. That may mean moving the group forward uh, to make a decision. It may mean delaying the decision to, uh, or, or investing more time in having a successful process. But that is the main role of that board president and is very, very key. I want to say that uh, it's not the easiest job and I'm a board president. Thane has been a board president. So uh, we can both appreciate the, uh, the uh, difficulty it, it can have. I want to say to all the directors out there, be sure to support your board president. Whether that mean training and facilitation or, or just helping that person ensure that there is successful facilitation for the meetings, but uh, protecting that, that the process Integrity is very, very, very key. If you're at all in doubt about whether or not a particular decision needs a communication plan, talk it through. And even something as simple as how are we going to get the final minutes out to our owners? Uh, it's not too mundane to have a communication plan about. Um, in fact, getting practice with uh, communicating small decisions is really good because it gives you success to build upon when there are larger decisions that you need to communicate out. If you all haven't figured this out already, what we're really talking about is process. And we want you to identify the real issues involved, be sure to prioritize your time wisely, and gain the knowledge that you need to deliberate. Let's get to the substance of what this means. We're talking about creating an effective, safe space to do your work. Valuing diversity and healthy dissent. Thane, uh, I'm going to ask you a question here. I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you give me an example of what healthy dissent uh, is? Healthy dissent is focused on the subject that's at hand, and it comes out of honest differences in viewpoint and perspective. Healthy dissent is what makes our co-op board meetings interesting. But I, sometimes people come to board meetings unprepared or uh, in a different state of mind. And I think each person is responsible for protecting the quality of the dissent in the meeting. I love that. I love that. You know, to me, healthy dissent is really 
diversity of voice and honest disagreement that doesn't actually paralyze the group or move it off course. In order to create that, uh, you need a, ser a shared sense of your own job. It means you come to the table all agreeing as to the purpose of why you're there and a shared set of expectations uh, that relates back to what you were saying earlier, Thane, about having agreements. I, I want to add, once you have a shared set of expectations, it's probably a good idea to write them down. Typically, this shows up in what we consider a code, what we call a code of conduct in your own board policies. But that shared sense of your own job and that shared sense of expectations, those things are going to allow you to reach your decision. Uh, two resources I want to point you to that deal with these things in more detail, the Sea Build Field Guide on Building a Positive Board Performance Culture by Art Sherwood and Joel Kapischke. It's available in the Sea Build Library, open source. Uh, check that out. Also, for very specific techniques and tools to moving forward with group decision making and group process. Let's talk a little bit about communicating decisions. As we mentioned before, part of the value of, of understanding board holism is understanding that the power of this one voice concept, a unified, clear voice, will shine, uh, present uh, a wonderful face, and uh, get your message out to the stakeholders. Also, being tr as transparent as possible about the process of decision making, uh, being able to demonstrate integrity with that process is uh, super key to communicating your board decisions. With a board culture grounded in this holism concept, now you can focus on content, what it is you're trying to say, and method, how you will say it. Board holism isn't an abstraction. When we gather as board leaders, we gather to uphold the fiduciary responsibility we've undertaken to manage the investment of our owners responsibly, so that together, cooperatively, we can meet needs that we could not meet individually. Cooperatives at their finest can change not only their communities, but they can also change the world.